How's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Modern Warfare 3's campaign and we're going to do a full breakdown in every single setting in the game to make sure that we can get the best maximum FPS while maintaining some very very good visuals and quality. So you're going to go ahead and launch the game into the campaign here and click on the little cogwheel to get into the graphic setting like always. From here we're going to go to and start in the display tab. One of the biggest settings here is restart shaders preloading. Anytime you change uh, any graphic setting and this is really in any game you're going to want to make sure your shaders all preload and, and reload into the game. So you're going to want to head and click on this and click restart. Uh, that way when you're done with all the settings you can close your game restart it and all your shaders will, will reload back into the game properly once you're, you make the changes. From here we'll go ahead into the quality tab. Uh, this is where we're going to do a full breakdown and everything as far as all the presets. Uh, you can see there's a whole bunch of different presets here. If we take a look at the graph, there's a few different ones. There's the max settings uh, is 100%. That's like the default FPS that we have. If every single setting is maxed out, that's our 100% baseline number. Um, as we lower settings, we're going to get a percentage of FPS increase, right? So if we go to the extreme, we get a 0.4% increase in FPS. If we go to ultra, we get a 3.6% increase in FPS. Balance preset, we get a, we get a huge 56.3%. It's actually pretty decent. Um, considering that it actually still looks pretty good, but with our optimized settings, we can actually do a little bit better than that. We can make it look better with a uh, with a with, with a bigger increase in performance. Basic preset, you can get 92% increase, but the game looks pretty bad. And then same thing with the minimum, it gets a 94.8% increase in performance, but again, the game does not look very good. So we're gonna go ahead and tweak some of these settings to see if we can uh, beat these presets out. Go to render resolution. If yours is locked out, it's probably because you have an upscaling feature here. Um, but you want to make sure this is set to 100. If it's not set to 100, you're going to want to go ahead and either turn it off or choose one that unlocks it for you. I personally like to run Fidelity FX CAS anyway, so I'm going to click on that um, and make sure this is set to 100. Dynamic resolution, you're going to want to make sure this is turned off unless you're really, really struggling for FPS. If you're under 50, 50, 40, 50, 60 FPS, you might want to consider this. I would probably recommend DLSS or XESS or anything like that before I would recommend dynamic resolution. So if you really want some FPS and you have DLSS available, you can run that. But again, I prefer Fidelity FX CAS and I turn my strength to 100 because I like my game nice and sharp looking. For VRAM scale, I'm going to recommend most people leave this at 80. When I was doing my testing on the max settings, like you saw in that graph, I was hitting about 70%, 71% VRAM usage out of 12 gigs. So this game can use a lot of, of VRAM. So I'd recommend leaving this a little bit higher uh, depending on how much VRAM you have, but you can tell based off this chart. This chart's actually uh, decently accurate from what I can tell in game. So uh, as long as you're underneath the target, you should be good leaving this at default. Uh, looking at our next setting here, which is actually a new setting that uh, is new to Call of Duty. It's the variable rate shading. This one's super interesting. So if we take a look at this graph, you can see it was a huge 31.1% increase in performance. Uh, from the default baseline, which is insane for a single setting. Essentially what it does is it activates a technique that improves performance at low visual cost by controlling where additional quality is needed in the image. When I turned it on and I took side-by-side -side screenshots of it, I zoomed in at like 250% zoom. I, I looked everywhere and there's a couple instances that I could tell the difference on it, but it was very minute. There was not very many differences that I could, that I, especially while you're playing, I don't think you'd be able to tell. So me personally, I'm going to run this on when I play the campaign through, but it's really going to be up to you guys. If you need the extra performance, by all means, turn it on. But if you do notice it and it bothers you, you can turn that off. But it's actually crazy how much a increase that one single setting does. Moving on to texture resolution for all of these, uh, you can tell that there's pretty much no uh, penalty for running to texture resolution as high as you want, um, unless you're limited on VRAM. So like we talked about earlier, if you put this to high and your VRAM goes past this little target down here, um, so if you scroll over here and go to high, see how it bumps up. If this were to go kind of close or past the target, uh, I'd recommend lowering this down. Like me personally, I'm gonna run it on normal anyway, um, just cause I don't like to use up all my VRAM no, no matter what, but I, I'm gonna recommend normal for most people unless you have really, really, low amounts of VRAM, then you probably, if you're under six gigabytes of VRAM, I'd recommend low or very low. Uh, moving on to texture filter, we have high, normal, and low. You can see there's pretty much no difference at all between any of these settings when it comes to performance loss. Um, and there is a little bit, it's hard to see, but there is a little bit of a difference visually. So I'd recommend leaving this on high uh, because you're not gonna lose any performance having it on high. Uh, the next one's gonna be depth of field, 2% decrease in performance. And 
I personally do not like the blur effect, so I always turn any kind of motion blur, depth of field, anything like that turned off, and it's just a bonus that you get an extra 2% of performance there. Uh, detail quality level, similar situation uh, where there's not much performance increase, and if you, if you have plenty of performance, you can leave it at high. I'm going to recommend most people run it on normal, uh, mainly because I couldn't really tell a difference in the actual detail quality level, and it's, a, it's an extra percent and a half. It's not a whole lot, but every little bit little bit counts. So I'm going to recommend everyone runs that on normal, unless you have a lot of performance to spare. Particle resolution, this is an interesting setting. There is a lot of performance to be had on the table. Um, going from high to normal is a 15% increase in performance. Uh, the downside is there's quite a bit of degrading visuals by going from high to normal. You really notice it in the water, any sort of flowing water going from high to normal. Normal still looks okay. It's definitely like, it's not game breaking or anything like that. I, I'm going to recommend most people run on normal, but if you have the extra performance, if you have the extra headroom and you just have a, a NASA PC, I recommend running on high, but for most people, I'm going to recommend running normal just to get that extra performance. And normal is way better than low or very low. So I'm going to recommend normal for most people. Bullet impacts and persistent effects. They don't really have any effect on the performance at all. So I'm going to recommend leaving both of those on uh, just so it's a little bit more immersive in the game itself. For shader quality, this one's pretty linear when it comes to performance. Um, and it's also a little bit linear when it comes to visual clarity as well and like the, how the visuals look. So I'm going to recommend medium for most people just because it does give you about a 4% increase in performance, but you also don't lose as much visual quality going down to low. So I'm going to recommend medium for most people. Uh, On-demand texture streaming, I'm going to recommend turning that off. Uh, local texture streaming quality uh, if we take a look at the graph for that one, it's exactly the same. So uh, just leave this one on normal or whatever the, the max is for you. Uh, shadow quality. And this one's also pretty linear, but this one also kind of like the texture resolution has VRAM limitations. So as you can see in the bottom bar here, the higher you go in the preset, the more VRAM it's going to use. So if you have extra VRAM and you have some extra performance, you can run ultra. But for most people, I'm going to recommend normal because it's a good balance between how the shadows look how much VRAM it uses, and how much performance boost you get. So normal, I think, is perfect for most people. Uh, screen space shadows, I'm going to recommend the low because you get about a 5% increase in performance, and you can't really tell a whole lot of difference on the because it's really just for weapons and characters and stuff. Can't really tell a difference between high and low. So I'm going to recommend low for everyone for that. Ambient occlusion, pretty much no difference at all. The 2%, that's almost within variance. So I'm just going to recommend everyone run both because the shadowing and the way it makes the game look, it looks way better with it on than with it turned off and it's worth that 2% that you could get. So I'm going to recommend everyone run both. For screen space reflections, there's no real difference for these, so I'm going to recommend running it on high, though just the max setting for that one. Um, for the static reflection quality, this one also no difference at all as far as performance, so just leave that one on high. Looking at tessellation, uh, this one... Again, not really any performance uh, difference unless you turn it completely off. You get about 1.2%, which again is about within margin of testing. Uh, so I'm just going to recommend everyone turn this to the max or all. For terrain memory, uh, this one didn't have a difference either, but I feel like later on in the game when you get to bigger, more open spaces, having it on max is actually going to help. So uh, I'd recommend, as long as you have enough VRAM, recommend running that on max. Going to volumetric quality, I'm going to recommend medium for this one. You can see you get a 4.4% increase in performance going to medium from high. Um, and you can't really tell a difference too much in like the smoke from the, the, the sun and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I'd recommend medium for everyone for that. Deferred physics quality, you only get a real performance increase by turning it off. And I, I personally couldn't really tell a difference between off and high. Uh, I'm sure there are people that can, but I personally couldn't. So I'm going to recommend turning it off. But if you're someone that likes to look at the waves moving up and down and all that kind of stuff, you might want to have that set to um, high, but I'm going to recommend off for most people. Weather grid of volumes has absolutely no effect on performance at all. So just max that one out to ultra. And then same thing with water quality, uh, no real difference. If you look at the graph, they're all pretty much the exact same. So just make sure that is set to water caustics and wave wetness. Um, and that should be everything for our optimized settings. So we're going to go ahead and hit apply settings, hit yes to turning off the texture streaming. Uh, and then we're going to take a look at this graph that shows the optimized comparisons versus the standard presets. Uh, so like we were talking about earlier with the variable rate shader, that was that setting that gained like 30% in performance. You can tell that is actually a huge variable here if you want to run it or not. So if you have it turned off, it's about a 50, 49.1% increase 
um, in performance over the max settings, and it looks pretty much like max settings. Um, so you get a 50% in increase with these optimized settings, uh, but it looks almost identical to the max settings. Or if you go uh, two down lower than that, the optimized settings with VSR on, uh, you get almost identical to max settings, but it's a 73.5% increase in performance. So that's personally what I'm going to be playing on. Like I said, with that variable rate shader, I'm going to have that turned on because I couldn't really tell a difference. Maybe I might later on in the campaign, but where I was testing, I could not see a difference. So that's what I'm going to run to get that 73.5% increase. Again, to just to reiterate, because it is so important, once you do have all those settings, if you didn't do it initially, go to restart shaders preloading, click on it, hit restart, and it says action only take effect after you restart the game. So you hit restart and then close the game, relaunch it, and at the top left here, you'll see that your shaders are loading. It'll go from like 0% up to 100%. You'll get a little pop-up and stuff that's uh, on the right-hand side that says it's like it's working on it. Once it's finished, it will go through, hit 100%, and then disappear. And you'll get a pop-up that says uh, shaders are finished. At that point in time, that's when you want a game. You wouldn't want a game while that's actually loading because you'll, you'll lose performance and stuff like that. But subscribe if you haven't already because we have a, a really banger video that's going to come out once multiplayer releases. We're going to dive into the config file and get just the max FPS possible. So we're going to have a really detailed video for that as well as some other videos later this year. So it's pretty exciting stuff. I appreciate you guys hanging out. Again, if you have any questions, uh, feel, feel free to comment or if you just want to drop an emoji down there really helps me a lot, a like on the video as well. So thank you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Take care.